Hello and welcome to today's tutorial by the Surgical Academy, where we will be discussing surgical sutures, specifically the classification of suture materials, suture size, and the components of the surgical needle. My name is Dr Tiffany Marie Borg and I will be delivering today's session. Surgical suture materials are used in the closure of most wound types. The ideal suture should allow the healing tissue to recover sufficiently to keep the wound closed together once they are removed or absorbed. The time it takes for a tissue to no longer require support from sutures will vary depending on the tissue type. Muscle, subcutaneous tissue or skin may take days for this to be the case. Fascia or tendons may take weeks to months. And vascular prosthesis may take months or never be in a position to no longer require support from sutures. It is worth noting that regardless of the suture composition, the body will react to any suture as a foreign body, causing a foreign body reaction to various degrees. Broadly, sutures can be classified into absorbable or non-absorbable materials. They can be further subclassified into synthetic or natural sutures and monofilament or multifilament sutures. The ideal suture is the smallest possible to produce uniform tensile strength, securely hold the wound for the required time for healing, then be absorbed. It should be predictable, easy to handle, produce minimal reaction, and tie the knot securely. The suture type chosen varies much dependent on the clinical scenario. So for example, if you were undertaking a mass closure of a midline laparotomy, you may wish to choose PDS as your suture choice. A vascular anastomosis will probably need proline, a hand-sewn bowel anastomosis may need vicol, and if you are securing a drain, you may decide to use a silk suture. Absorbable sutures are broken down by the body by an enzymatic reaction or hydrolysis. The time in which this takes place varies between different materials, the location of the suture and patient factors. Absorbable sutures are commonly used for deep tissues and for tissues that heal rapidly as a result, they may be used in small bowel anastomoses, suturing in the urinary or the biliary tracts, or for tying off small vessels near the skin. The complete absorption time varies. Non-absorbable sutures are used to provide long-term tissue support. They remain walled off by the body's inflammatory processes until removed manually if needed. Uses include for tissues that heal slowly. So for example, if you're dealing with fascia, tendons, when closing the abdominal wall or for vascular anastomoses. As well as organizing sutures according to whether or not they are absorbable or not absorbable, sutures can be classified according to their raw origin. So natural sutures are made from natural fibers. Examples include silk or catgut. They are less frequently used as they tend to cause a bigger tissue reaction. However, suturing silk is still commonly used, um, especially if you're securing a surgical drain. Synthetic sutures are made from man-made material. Examples include PDS and nylon. They tend to be more predictable than natural sutures, especially in terms of the loss of tensile strength and the absorption. Sutures can also be subclassified according to their structure. Monofilament sutures are a single-stranded filament suture. Examples include nylon, PDS, and proline. They have a lower infection rate, but do not secure the knot in a, in a good fashion um, and they also have poor ease of handling. Multifilament sutures on the other hand are made of several filaments that are twisted together. Examples include braided silk or vicryl sutures. They handle easier and hold the shape of the knot in a secure fashion, however they are associated with a higher infection rate. This table provides a concise summary of the various suture types and their characteristics. The diameter of a suture that you will choose will affect its handling properties and its tensile strength. The larger the size named to the suture, the smaller the diameter is. So for example, a 7 suture is smaller than a 4 suture. When choosing your suture size, the smallest size possible should be chosen, taking into account the natural strength of the tissue. The surgical needle allows the placement of the suture within the tissue, carrying the material through with minimal residual trauma. Commonly, surgical needles are made from stainless steel. They are made up from a swaged end, 
This connects the needle to the suture. There's also a needle body or a shaft. This is the region that is grasped by the needle holder. Needle bodies can be round, cutting or reverse cutting. Round bodied needles are used in friable tissues such as the liver or the kidneys. Cutting needles are triangular in shape and have three cutting edges to penetrate tough tissues such as the skin and sternum. They have a cutting surface on the concave edge. Reverse cutting needles have a cutting surface on the convex edge and are ideal for tough tissues such as tendon or subcuticular sutures. They have a reduced risk of cutting through tissue. The needle point acts to pierce the tissue. This begins at the maximal point of the body and, running and runs to the end of the needle. It can be either sharp or blunt. Blunt needles are used for abdominal wall closure and in friable tissues. They can potentially reduce the risk of bloodborne viruses from needle stick injuries. Sharp needles pierce and spare tissues with minimal cutting and are used where leakage must be prevented. The ideal surgical needle should be rigid enough to resist distortion, yet flexible enough to bend before breaking, be as slim as possible to minimize trauma, be as sharp enough to penetrate the tissue with minimal resistance, and be stable within a needle holder to permit accurate placement. In summary, suture materials can be classified in a variety of ways. The choice of suture material depends on various factors and the surgical needle allows for correct positioning of the suture within a tissue. We hope that today's tutorial has increased your knowledge and understanding of sutures. We look forward to delivering further tutorials in the future. Take care and have a lovely day.